side of being Our fired. Folks. Usually I have to uh, thank everyone for assembling on short notice. I don't have to do that today, but thanks for showing up. Uh, this marks the end of my tenure as the general manager of the Toronto Maple Leafs, and I wanted to say a few uh, goodbyes and some thank yous. I'll apologize up front for my voice. Uh, I caught a cold when I was in, in Russia, and I haven't been able to shake it. Uh, so I'll apologize for that in advance. Would have been nice to get this notice before I went to Russia, but I didn't. Um, Toronto Maple Leafs are the crown jewel of the National Hockey League. It's that simple. And it's been an honor to have the opportunity to be the general manager here. Uh, there's no question about that. Uh, the average GM is going to retire and never be able to say that he was the general manager of the Toronto Maple Leafs, and I'm grateful for that opportunity. I want to thank a few people. Uh, to start, first, Richard Petty, who brought me here. Uh, great boss, great man. The Ontario Teachers Pension Fund, who first gave me the opportunity. Uh, Rogers and Bell for allowing me to continue in this role. And Larry and Judy Tannenbaum, who are special people. Um, I'm going to recap what happened on Wednesday. Uh, I was, whose phone is that? I was en route to the airport. I was flying to uh, New York to attend the Board of Governors meeting. Uh, I got a call from Tom Anselmi that I was required downtown. Uh, I went to uh, the office and was told I was no longer the general manager of the Toronto Maple Leafs. I, uh, at that point, uh, told them I was leaving to go uh, take my daughters out of school and tell them. I didn't want them to hear that on the radio or hear it from a classmate. Uh, I called Dale Lastman and suggested uh, perhaps a role as a senior advisor might make sense. He said it did, and uh, I thought that's what we were doing. I was informed yesterday that the senior advisor role is to the board and to Tom, not in hockey operations. Uh, that was not my understanding, but that's fine. That's, uh, we'll go from there and see what, what that involves. Uh, some thank yous. Uh, to Jennifer and my kids, Katie, Patrick, Molly, uh, Marin, and Gracie. Uh, this job has been very difficult on them. Uh, to the Tannenbaums again, uh, to Tom Anselmi, to Dale Lastman, who I see is here, and to Ron Wilson, who uh, put in a, he did his best here and did a great job. I want to thank the staff at MLSC. It's the best uh, front office and management and sales and marketing team in pro sports. I especially want to thank the coaches, the hockey operations people, and the scouts. Uh, particularly the last couple drafts, I think we did really well, and that's a credit to the scouting staff. I want to thank the players. Uh, players might not have gotten the job done for us, but they didn't cheat us on effort, and it's a great bunch of guys. I want to thank the media. I think our coverage has been fair by and large, and uh, I want to thank them for that. I want to thank our sponsors, our season ticket holders, who are the lifeblood of any uh, team, a season ticket holder stopped me on the subway coming down here today, said her family has had seats since 1970-something, and uh, that's what makes this place special. You know, we play in some buildings where they honor season ticket holders who have been there 10 years, and here we're honoring people who have been here for 60, 60 years, and uh, that's special. Uh, Leafs Nation, um, I remember when the league asked me if I could sell 40,000 tickets to the Winter Classic, and I said I need uh, 48 hours. And he called back and said, can you sell 50,000? And I said, I need 72 hours. We got ticket requests from 30 foreign countries, every province in Canada. Leafs Nation is special. Wherever we go, wherever we played, we see blue. And we talk about that as a team all the time. Doesn't matter where we go. And Leafs Nation, thank you. And the City of Toronto and the province of Ontario, um, thank you too. It's a great place to live and I'm proud to live here. So let's talk about how we got here today. Uh, I did not accomplish what I set out to accomplish here. That's clear, absolutely clear. And I did some positive things. I think some building blocks have been put in place for the future that will stand Dave Nonis in good stead. I think in terms of adding to our staff, I think we've added some key people to our staff who will play major roles. I think in terms of the Marlies, in terms of our reserve list players we've drafted who will be Leafs someday and will make a difference on this team, I think we've put a lot of those building blocks in place. But we didn't win enough, and that's why we're here today. And that's, uh, I apologize to the fans that I wasn't able to deliver more in terms of the on-ice product, uh, but that's why we're here today. Our team motto is no complaints, no excuses. And I don't have any today. In an age where 
Accountability seems to be vanishing. I intend to be accountable. I have no complaints or excuses today. Had we won more games, I wouldn't be here today. Wouldn't be standing here today in front of you. It's that simple. And I believe absolutely that ownership has the right to make a decision like this. No whining, no belly aching. Ownership has the right to have a guy running the team that they want to run the team. I believe in that. I'm proud of some things that I accomplished here. First and foremost, I think I can say in terms of community service that no one, uh, no one did more uh, in a management role in the National Hockey League or any other league. Uh, I think I said my first day on the job that I would deliver on that, and I believe I have. I'm proud of that. I've tried to make a difference in every community I've worked in in my entire professional life, and I think I've done that here. I was accessible, I was honest and candid, I was loyal, and I worked my ass off. And those things won't change. So in closing, I'd like to thank all the people I thanked. I'd like to wish the Toronto Maple Leafs well, especially Dave Nonis, Randy Carlisle, and Dion Phaneuf. And I wish the hockey club nothing but well. Thank you. Questions? Bob, go ahead. Brian, do you want to be a general manager in the National Hockey League again, and how quickly do you want to do that? Uh, tomorrow, if I can. Uh, I, I don't think I'm done from a hockey perspective, and uh, I, I will t I, I'm definitely in the job market, no question. Paul? Brian, uh, knowing what you had when you arrived here four years ago, leaving with what you've got here right now, how disappointing is it uh, not to be able to stay here and finish the job? Well, I think... I think you can make the case. I think he, I can make that. I think that's a case that I'd let the media make. Um, from my perspective, like I said, um, they bring you in to win games. I didn't win enough games. Uh, and I think the if your epitaph is, yeah, but look, I left these building blocks and everything, then that's, you know, I'll leave that to you guys. Like I say, I think I put some building blocks in place. I would have liked to finish the job. I was stunned by this turn of events, no question about it. But uh, I do believe ownership has the right to make that call, and uh, I'll move on. Elliot, Brian, were you given uh, any explanation as to why the move happened now? Yes. Was it? Well, I, I would view that as something that's between me and ownership. They gave me the reasons why they felt it was time and the reasons why the timing fit, and you can ask them if they want to divulge them, fine. I believe that some of those things belong in a boardroom. In the front. Um, first off, uh, I'm one of the only few uh, out gay members of the Canadian media, so I want to say thank you for everything that you've done for the community. Um, as GM, you're one of the very few pro sports executives who spoke openly about homophobia and discrimination in pro sports. Um, you've also been a very good friend to the gay community. Do you see the loss of your job affecting your ability to bring that vice to pro sports? Well, I think you lose your voice. Um literally and figuratively sometimes in this job. When you're not, I think what I felt is that you could use the job title, the muscle behind the job, uh, to drive some of the charitable initiatives I worked in. Uh, it's not going to change my focus or my commitment. I think it carries less weight if it's Brian Burke, senior advisor, than it does if it's Brian Burke, general manager. But I don't intend to change any of the things I do community-wise. That's, I mean, that's in my DNA. It's not going to change. Terry. Brian, why didn't it work here, do you think? We didn't win enough games. They're... Well, I, I think people stand up here when they get let go and they say, well, you have to look at the mess I inherited, which is not fair to John Ferguson. The players John left me, we managed to turn into some pretty good players, so it's not fair to him. And I don't expect Dave Nonis to stand up here in five years or whenever he gets the ax and say, well, look what I started with. That, that's another excuse. I mean, I knew what the roster was when I came here. Wasn't there was no secrets about it, so I'm not I'm not ducking that one either. I'm not going to say, well, look at look at what I have when I got here. That's not fair to Fergie. So you, you guys can evaluate all that stuff. You don't need my view on that. What do you, what do you learn from this job that you take to your next one now that maybe you didn't have four years ago? Well, I'd like to go to work for a team that doesn't get sold next time. <laughs> I've got a pretty poor track record on that. Vancouver and then here, someone buys the team. They have the absolute right to have their guy. I got to pick better next time. But I wouldn't trade this experience. I wouldn't trade the ability to have worked here for as long as I have and live in this city. I wouldn't trade that for anything. Rosie? Uh, 
Brian, what does senior advisor mean? Uh, it, it sounds a little confusing right no now. No idea. If, if it's advisor to the board, does that mean you're not supposed to consult with um, your successor and talk about hockey? Well, if Dave Nonis wants me, he's, you know, we've been friends for a long time. I'm available to him anytime. I think the board, uh, my understanding is, and again, this just came to light yesterday afternoon, is that they want a, a, more, a little more distance, and that's fine. Again, that's, they're entitled to that. I don't know what the role is. I asked Tom this morning because I knew I'd be asked. And he said, we'll work through it. And that's good enough for me. John? Brian, you talk about uh, joining teams that don't change ownership. Are you then talking that you believe this was more of a corporate decision or a hockey decision? Well, I, I don't know. But I, I know one thing that it's, it's certainly, uh, you'd have to ask them that. But uh, again, I'm not ducking the hockey side of things. But I, it's clear to me uh, the second time where a team has been sold when I've been hired. And the people that hired me hired Brian Burke. And, you know, maybe the new guys don't like that brand. Maybe they want someone who's a little more conventional. And they're entitled to that. That's fine. I'm not changing. I'm not going to change how I do things. That's not possible. So I'm Irish. We're stubborn. So got to find someone who likes that brand, I guess. Steve, go ahead. Brian, do you think uh, your feisty sort of personality had something to do with the board? Uh... Ask them. Well, you said you wouldn't. You know, if you got when you got another job, you wouldn't change anything. You wouldn't. You're not. You Correct. wouldn't go forward now thinking that I've got to change the way I operate in some ways. I'm not changing how I operate. If you ask me a question, I'm going to answer it as honestly as I can. If you don't like the answer, that's too bad. You ask the question. You write something I don't like, I'm going to call you and tell you that. I'm not changing it. So, um, got to find a fit, I guess, if there is one. And if there's not, then we'll see what happens next. I haven't gotten that far yet. It's just two days into this. I'm still not used to it. Brian, you said you're not going to change. Do you have any regrets about what anything you've done here in the last three and a half years? Well, we didn't win. And obviously, your job as a GM is to bring in players that win. We didn't win. So th this is – you can blame this if you want. I could stand here and say, oh, it's my personality. I didn't like my personality. Those all become pretexts and excuses later. If you've won enough games, you can be as obnoxious as you want to be if you're in first place. And so it's, it's about winning games. That's why we're here. And I'm not ducking that. We didn't win enough games. So there's nothing you would look back on and say, if I'd made this decision differently? Maybe you, it you guys can do that. You can do that. I, I, I will do that introspectively, but you can do that. I'm pretty sure there will be a pretty good post-mortem on this tomorrow. Looking by, judging by the size of the room. Bob? Brian, you said you want to go back to work tomorrow as a general manager. If an opportunity didn't present itself, you've worked in the league office before. If anything were to present itself in that fashion, would that interest you? I, I haven't gotten that far yet. I mean, I enjoyed my time at the league. I'm a great fan of Gary Bettman's and Bill Daly's. I think people know that. But uh, I haven't gotten that far yet. This is still... You got to understand there's sometimes when you get fired and you see the vultures circling and you understand it's coming. You're not sure when you're going to drop dead in the desert, but it's coming. You can see the vultures. This one here was like a two by four upside the head to me. So, and uh, again, that's not a complaint, um, but so I, I'm still sorting through what to do next. All I know is I'm going to the New England Patriots playoff game with my kids tomorrow. That's I know what I'm doing tomorrow. I don't Chris. know what I'm doing on Monday. Chris. Brian Nett. How different was the reality of being Leafs GM compared to what you expected coming in? It's about what I expected. It's a job with, uh, it's the Vatican. It's the biggest stage in, the, in pro hockey, maybe in pro sports. I remember Theo Epstein, I was at a Red Sox game three years ago, and he said, is your job like my job? I said, you have no idea what my job is like in terms of the, the visibility. So it's exactly what I expected. It's the pressure I expected. It's the, the stage I expected. Paul. Brian, uh, you've had 10 different goaltenders in your time here. Is that the biggest challenge in getting this club back to respectability and up on the northern swing, do you think? Well, it's not. The good news is that's not my problem anymore. As of 48 hours ago, it's someone else's problem. As I said, we were exploring opportunities to upgrade at a lot of different positions. I believe that had we not been able to upgrade, I believe in James Reimer. I said that. And I think I'll be borne out on that one. But uh, it's someone else's problem now. This, clearly, goaltending was an issue here. Clearly. And uh, 
It's, it's not for lack of trying different solutions that we, uh, we weren't able to solve it, but we weren't able to solve it. I still believe if James Reimer hadn't gotten hurt, it wouldn't have been an issue. Why do you expect to be running the next U.S. Olympic team? That's not. That's the best part about today, Steve, is that I probably don't ever have to talk to you again, so you can ask them. We'll take two more. Do you think there'll come a time when you'll feel even worse than you do now because this was, as you just said, the Vatican, and uh, you didn't make the playoffs here, and one day you're going to wake up and think, damn, I wish I could do that again? Uh, I don't know how I could feel a whole lot worse than I feel today, but maybe. Mike? Uh, Brian, for a man of, of your experience and stature, I guess one of the obvious questions would be, why do you want to stay on as senior advisor, especially when, when you just said moments ago that your biggest mistake was uh, maybe looking at the ownership group and having it switch on you. Why stay on with the club then? Well, I believe my firing was handled with dignity and class. I still believe in the Tannenbaums. I still believe in that the ownership group here is committed to winning, and they're entitled to have Dave Nonis here instead of me, if that's what they want. I, there's no issue with that. When you own a team, that's what you get. You get the right to put those people in place, and you get the right to change them if they're not the people you want. That's what ownership brings. I have no issue with that, no problem with that at all. This, I suggested it to Dale. Um, if I can help in any way, I'm going to. I'm not big on cashing paychecks and sitting around doing nothing, so if I can help, I'm going to. And uh, I do wish this team well. I do. It's a, it's a great city. It's a great franchise. And I think great days are ahead. But uh, you know, that, that's my answer to you is I, I do believe that this thing's going the right way. And like someone asked earlier, I would have liked to see if I could take it farther. But I have no problem with the decision to, uh, you know, if this is, what, this is what you get when you own a team. You get the right to make decisions like that. Here. Uh, Mr. Burke. Um, there are some teams across the league that are doing sort of promos for fans. In Ottawa, it's free for kids under 14 on the home opener. Tampa did a $200 season ticket deal. I know you've been out in the community a lot. I've seen you. Um, do you think that the Leafs should do something for Toronto fans as kind of a thank you? Would you like to see something like that happen? Not my issue. Not my problem anymore. I got, I got other headaches now, but that ain't one of them. What the Leafs do with uh, opening night, that's someone else's problem. Final one goes to Mike. Brian, the circumstances of, the, of this have people wondering, is there, was there an issue between ownership uh, regarding your personal life, private life, anything off ice, any opportunity you'd like to take to address any of that? No, that was not addressed in my meeting. It was not raised as an issue. Uh, this is all media speculation. It was not presented to me as an issue. I think it's unfair speculation, frankly, to the people on the other side that, oh, this is a personal thing with somebody there was none of that presented to me, and so I'm not going to respond to it. I'm not looking for a sniper behind a bush. I think ownership has the right to make that change. They've made that change. It's my duty, I believe, to accept that graciously and move on. I don't know how many times I have to answer this, but why don't you ask the people who made this decision why the timing was what it was. I did not get a satisfactory explanation for that, and it's not, you know, I'm not in a position to offer it. So. Okay. okay. Thank you, Brian. Thanks, everybody.